Welcome to Lawyers, Guns and Money, where we speak to Ben Hart from Integrity Legal. And you can uh, find Integrity Legal on your Google machine. And uh, Ben's got his own uh, channel where, from time to time, he has a bit of a whinge about things. A little bit, yeah. yeah uh, and we'll get to one of those on another episode when we're talking about masks. Yeah, sure. You'll love that. But for now, we're going to be talking about retirees in Thailand. Mm -hmm. Now, pre-COVID, we had a fair share of retirees in Thailand. It was a popular country to come and retire. Mm -hmm. Why not? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe even 10 years ago, you used to get a pretty good exchange rate, uh, used to be able to sort of stay here and live a pretty good life. Since the exchange rates tightened up a bit mm -hmm. and COVID, things have changed. Yeah, I was actually reading yesterday, there was an interview with the deputy commander out at immigration and total number of current retirement visas is about 35,000 and change. And I remember now, I'm, this is kind of coming from my memory, but I remember reading back in 2018, there was like a UN report which had compiled data from Thai immigration that there was, at that time, there was like 85,000, as I recall, retirees in Thailand. I, I could be off on that number, but it was it was definitely more than double 35,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the, you know, begs the question, where is everybody? You well, know. I suppose there's been some people who, through COVID, wanted to get back to their homes. Right. And a lot of the embassies uh, had special... Yeah, facilita yeah, facilitated that, had charter flights, and so they took advantage of that, fearing the worst. Although I somehow suspect that the ones staying here have probably had the best, uh, the best ride. But all probably. that aside, yeah. um, it's... It, I think it started a little earlier than that. Sorry to interrupt you. Okay. Because if you go back... So first, and I, I, as I recall, uh, Australia had to deal with this as well, Australian retirees. We, had, we used to have what were called the income affidavits. So you could go to your embassy and you could just fill out an affidavit, get it notarized that you made X amount of money, and, and that was that. Uh, that. We had that with the Americans and the British. I think the Australians had that as well. And they basically said, we're not going to do that anymore because we're not attesting to the veracity of what you're saying. We're just notarizing your signature. They threw that out. That protocol went away. I think that winnowed down a few retirees. And then, honestly, the big joke era. You know, that really, you know, they tightened that up. He, he came in, put policies in place that really took a stringent, hard-line look at uh, retirement visa financial policy, financial evidence policy. And I, I think that probably caused some people to go. When you said big joke, you weren't making a uh, editorial comment. No, no. His name is uh, Super Chat... Uh, Surachat Big Su Joke Hakpan. Ha Surachat Hakpan, who yeah. I've interviewed before. Oh, really? Okay. He's about this high right. and uh, doesn't speak any English. Right. But he was uh, sort of the poster boy for uh, going and chasing naughty foreigners. Yes, yeah. No, he did a lot. He did a lot with respect to... I've said this for about eight years now. The overall paradigm in immigration has gone from an administrative sort of mindset to a like law enforcement mindset. Uh, they did a lot of crackdowns on overstayers and illegal entrants. But another big one with respect to retirees is they took a real hard line on the financial requirements. You know, and what used to be possible now, things have kind of lightened up since then. And again, it's all case specific. But but at the time, you know, people used to have the balance for the needed time period they needed to just get their visa, and then they go back to living their lives. But, you know, he put things in place where you had to have it in for two months prior and three months after your renewals and things. I, I think that that had a bearing on the number of retirees that are in Thailand. Just made it a little bit more complicated. Yeah, and c candidly, I do think he probably did, for lack of a better term, shake out some of the people that didn't financially qualify. They were just sort of gaming the system. Now, especially now in sort of this, as we're tapering off COVID and things are kind of hopefully going back into kind of a normal situation, uh, the question is, is that particularly a good thing right now? Because I think we could use the foreign revenue, but, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, so who knows? And there was a time some uh, 11 years ago when one particular foreigner came to Thailand and decided to come here on a retirement visa. Mm -hmm. um, that uh, a payment of some 3,000 baht was paid mm -hmm. to somebody uh, under the counter mm -hmm. and a rubber stamp automatically appeared in their passport without a shred of uh, paperwork. No names, no pack drill, uh, but uh, those sort of things used to happen. I just don't think those things happen anymore. No, I can't, I can't comment on the past, certainly, but uh, no, I, I have not seen that. In fact, I mean, re retirement visa processing is a... 
it's a bit of a cumbersome experience at the moment. I, I won't say it's it's completely unpleasant. You know, it, it's kind of an annoyance, but it's just something that has to be done to maintain status. And here recently, especially in the last year, they have gone, in my opinion, out of their way to accommodate retirees because, quite frankly, they're a much needed financial resource. Sure. Yeah. And uh, if you do need help with a retirement visa, if you, you can do the documentation yourself, but otherwise you could consult a lawyer like uh, Ben, or you could go to a, uh, a visa agent. Be careful who you appoint, get some recommendations. That's what we recommend at the Tiger. Thanks for that. Thank you. Talking about retirees, and I, I remember a survey just in the last week, they're still saying in Asia, Thailand's still probably the easiest or best place to retire. I would, and I would agree with that. Honestly, uh, and when I compare it to any place else, it's either way too Byzantine or like you can't figure out how to do anything. Right. Yeah. Okay. Retiring in Thailand, topic of today's Lawyers, Guns and Money. Thank you very much for watching. We've got a whole playlist of all sorts of legal topics at Lawyers, Guns and Money. Must be lunchtime. I can hear them rushing off to. Uh... Yep, exactly. Right, so we're back with another Lawyers, Guns and Money next time.